Ah, nope, 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 nope. I don't know what happened to face out. Nope, nope, nope. Um, yeah, nope. The new Jordan Peele film came out. I watched it last night with my girlfriend. Short and sweet of it. We really liked it. We had a good time with it. Now, we're... My free thoughts on, because uh, I've already reviewed Get Out and Us, if you go through my very large playlist of actual movie reviews, you'll find them. But my brief thoughts real quick. Get Out, That I still think that's Jordan Peele's best movie. That was a great debut, and it is, um, I'm just going to angle myself a little differently here. Uh, it was a great debut, got him Oscar consideration, I think it even won a few awards. Uh, it was just, it was a great, it was a good film. Uh, Great commentary that was not hammered in. It really was part of the story. It was tense. It was funny. It was scary at parts. I mean, not. I didn't think it was scary. I didn't find it scary personally, but clearly it's designed to be a little frightening in concept and what you know was happening. Us, I like the performances are fantastic, but when when I can pick out what the plot twist was going to be. Um, the reveal is going to be literally the opening credits of the film, the clone subplot. I'm like, okay, something went wrong here. And the ending of that film just doesn't make any sense. There's so many logistical problems to the ending of that film that it, um, it just, it's kind of way, it just wears on you a little bit. So where does Nope stand? As I said, we really liked it. For me, smack dab in the middle. And at first, I couldn't really think of a lot that was bothering me about the film, but I watched two other people's videos, and they brought up something that I realized they're 100% right. And now that I think on it, I'm like, if I were to see this, sit down and watch this movie again, these scenes would drag on. We'll get to that when we get to it, though. But it stars Daniel Kaluuya and uh, Kiki Palmer as uh, O.J. Hayward, uh, uh, Haywood. And Emerald Haywood. By the way, I did not make the O.J. Simpson connection with joke. I just thought his name was O.J. I didn't even think about it. So when she says, run, O.J., run! I'm like, I didn't even think about that as a joke. Um, but, um, yeah, and, uh, and they basically play brother and sister. Their father, who was Keith David. Not enough Keith David. That they used them as much as they had them, and God bless them. But damn, they could use more Keith David, because everything needs more Keith David. Uh, Goliath, man. Um, but, and their father dies under mysterious circumstances, and they now are in charge of the ranch, and they're, you know, trying hard, desperately to, you know, keep things afloat. Kiki's more estranged from the family. Uh, they call her M for short, Emerald. M is more estranged from the family. Uh, and then they see what appears to be a flying saucer, saucer, and you see in the trailers. And as always, I'm not giving away anything that's in the trailers, or the that's not in the trailers, or that would ruin the movie. So don't worry about anything I say here. Uh, and they said, okay, we're going to be getting, we're going to be getting the Oprah show. You can get a, we can get this on film. We're going to be able to just, you know, we'll be on easy street. And, uh, and they get, they, they enlist the help. Well, they enlist. He ends up helping along. Brandon Para plays Angel, who is basically a Fry's employee. You can serve them stuff. And he believes in the aliens. And, um, they get the aid of a film, a, a director slash, um, film, uh, cameraman. Uh, Antler's host, played by Michael Wincott, who I loved with him in this movie. I'm like, I knew who that guy was, and I couldn't remember his name. Michael Wincott, he was great. And there's a, another, and there's another character called uh, Ricky Ju Park, uh, Stephen Young, who we'll uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, because he is, he falls into one, he falls into a spot that I need to address later on. But yeah, and that's the story, and. So, and what I liked about this story, first and foremost, all the performances are top-notch. I bought these two as siblings. He's the kind of more awkward, not necessarily the best people, a bit more quiet, but he's the responsible, trying to keep the farm going, older brother. Whereas M is a lot more of a people person, but she, at one point they have this conversation about, you know, their relationship a little bit with the, the house and stuff like that. And... He and he calls her out for something that about ruining a shoot in the movie or like ruining a deal with them, and um, she, and she basically just throws it back. He's like, yeah, guess what? No, th that wasn't my. You know, everything I just did uh, talked about wasn't my side gig. This is my side gig. For a little bit, M is actually not the most likable because she really seems like the 
the, the person who just wanted to get away from the family and do her own thing. And she did it. But she so doesn't care about everything else going on in their lives that it makes her seem really self-centered and kind of like a bitch at points. Uh, but that goes very, very quick. She, she clearly did love her father and she loves her brother and they are able to, you know, hang together and all that. And it, it, the movie goes... But for the, the first 20 minutes of her screen time, not even 20 minutes of her screen time, maybe like 10 minutes of screen time, I'm like... Girl, get you need to back the step up right now. It's like you don't get to talk to him like that after you know the, after you know messing something like that up. That was very important, but whatever. Um, yeah, and like I said, I like the Michael Wincott uh, character a lot, particularly because I heard it described he's kind of like the quint of this movie. And when watching the movie, I'm like. This is kind of, because Jordan Peele once said, I'm going all over the place, but it's coming together in one description. Jordan Peele basically said that this, one of his favorite like films is Tremors. And you know what? When I heard that, I'm like, Jordan Peele, my man, I love Tremors. I own the entire, well, I own one through five. I don't own six and seven. Seven actually wasn't bad. Six, actually five's, honestly, among all of them, and they're all B-movie Jeez, five's probably the worst one. They actually do improve a bit afterwards. Actually, seven really wasn't that bad. Um, I like seven quite a bit, actually. I mean, I still like the original three, and the fourth one kind of is that weird prequel oddball child. Anywho, but you say trimmers. I'm like, when you watch this film without giving any impl implication away, yeah, and it's not just trimmers, it's Jaws as well. Because you see in the trip, the saucer flies around and hides in the clouds like a shark in the water. You see the fin every now and then. You see the saucer every now and then, but it disappears, and you're just trying to get a shot of it. And that's what this guy's like. Try to... <laughs> There's literally a scene that is basically the the the, um, uh, or the drunk singing scene around the boat, or on the boat in Jaws, but in the context of this. And it made me laugh. It did make me laugh, but it's also like a serious undertone to to what I which I appreciated. The movie, everyone's been saying it, and they and I agree with it completely. The movie knows how to build tension and keep on the tension. There's a scene, and again, brief shot of it in the trailer where you see Daniel Kaluuya, Kaluuya and um, you see what you uh, we, you see him, a little alien creatures in like the barn, like something's walking through um the horse stable and it is a creepy scene because you're like ah but and how much should i reveal about this uh, so for me to talk about this scene i can't i'm not obviously not gonna spoil what the twist with the aliens is. there first and foremost they show it throughout the entirety of those trips particularly like the trailer where you see the giant saucer coming at him on the horseback it is aliens, so let's get it out of the way right now. It is aliens, but the twist about the aliens is something I can't give away. Because me, when we and my girlfriend heard a line of dialogue, we're like, and my mind didn't initially go to what the twist actually was. My mind went to something else. But when the twist actually got revealed, it got revealed in a way where I realized, oh crap, because of what happened in the scene. Um, and I'll leave that. The scene in the barn. I'll, 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 I'll tell you right now, those aren't the aliens in the movie. Now, the aliens are in the movie, but that scene's not about the aliens, per se. It's an extremely tense scene, though, and I'm going to leave it at that. There, there's something about those things that are different than what's actually going on. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. But that scene is done really creepy. It also ends with a joke that just that suddenly just made me laugh my ass off. Uh, which is frankly something I probably would have done. Uh, honestly, in that guy's, in Dane Clue's, in, uh, OJ's situation. <laughs> um, so yeah, great tension. The saucer stuff, especially in certain scenes, a lot of tension there. Uh, they play around with a camera work a lot. <laughs> they the whole idea of the title, nope, they say that a lot too. Like, in the scene, and you see him get, like, check out of the car, and the thing's hovering right over him in the rain, and he's like, nope. <laughs> Everyone just gets a good laugh at that. <laughs> Oh, man. This movie has, has a lot of jokes to it. Absolutely. So, it's got it's got um, great tension. The acting's great. I actually like the climax of the film pretty well. I will agree. The end... 
the ending isn't bad. In fact, the ending for me kind of, and without without giving anything away again, comes kind of like out of a Western to some degree. But what I don't like about the end ultimately is twofold. One, they ultimately aren't going to be able to do anything with what they have. And two, it um, it just stops. The movie, there's no, the, the movie would have served for like a minute, minute two minute to then a two and a half minute epilogue. Uh, uh, just a sum of how everything is kind of handled or, you know, what else could be happening or what, or, or just them going on with their lives. But it just kind of stops. And I'm like, I, we stayed throughout the entire credits to see if there was going to be anything else, but there wasn't. So that's unfortunate. Um, but this leads me into some, uh, I think one of the big problems with the movie there are two characters in the film. One is a TMZ guy uh, that shows. He's the guy on the motorcycle. He's not a cop. He's a guy on a motorcycle. And I will say this. <coughs> First off, I actually thought it was um, the whoever was. Do- I don't. I don't have the guy, uh, the actor here. I actually thought that was like Nick Cage for a second. The way he was talking, I'm like, did they get Nick Cage in this? What the hell? Um, and you know, honestly, I'm gonna find out right now. I'm, I'm going to. I'm on IMDb right now, but I'm actually gonna go to wikipedia for that see if um there i could find with it there's a there's a scene involving a tmz reporter and first i'm like oh yeah for uh, in the first half of the scene i'm like okay yeah um and yeah it's not nick cage i i knew i doubt it was doubted it was going to be nick cage but um uh but it was still um yeah, was it uh, Oz Perkins? I don't know. <coughs> Damn, I got something caught in my throat. <coughs> Pardon. But when we first meet the TMZ reporter, I'm like, okay, first off, like a TMZ reporter, you're probably doing something illegal right now. But B, this is how I expect this kind of person to act. But then something happens, and then the latter part of the character, I'm like, okay, no, now you're just a cartoon of, the, of a character like that. Now it's not making any sense. So, yeah, no, I wasn't buying it. The real problem this film has, though, a lot of people said that the concept is interesting, but the twist wasn't all that great. I actually really like the twist. The problem is, a lot, there's a side story. It's even what the, uh, the uh, movie opens up on. Involving uh, a character... Um, Stephen Young's character, uh, who basically was like a child actor, owns an amusement work based off one of his uh, sitcoms, and it details something that happened terrible, that something terrible that happened on a show he was on. Um, and I was wondering what ultimately the tie-in was, and even to the, even up until today, I still didn't understand until I kind of heard some people say they got what it meant, and I had to think about what it meant. And then realizing what this character does in the movie, I'm like, okay, now I think I see what the symbolism of this was. Great. The problem is, it ultimately doesn't add anything to the overall movie. You could have cut every one of those clips that flash back to what happened on that show. And those aren't short clips. Those are a good... Let me see how long this movie is, by the way. I think it was like two and something hours. Two hours and something minutes. 210. Honestly, you could have cut out all of those. And and that entire... The show is called Gordy. Uh, The entire Gordy subplot. And just had this guy do what he was doing. And it would have flowed far more effectively. Like, because every time that we cut over to that, I'm like, okay, where's this going? Where's this going? And ultimately, it went nowhere. It actually served no bearing on the story apart from the actions of what um uh the actions of what uh Stephen Young was doing and even then you probably could have just said okay well he he's doing this because of this because you know he's an entrepreneur he wants to get people there okay cool fine i will admit though it does lead to a scene for the real for a real the it's the realization of the twist. I will say that. It's the twist revealed, basically. And that's when I... Because, again, me and my girlfriend here lied. And we're like, 
Okay, well, what's this? And she was kind of going there before I was. I needed a bit more convincing. It's after something happens. And it's the immediacy. I'm like looking at this shot. I'm like, oh, no, I know what's happening. And the shot continues. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> like, oh, that's a, oh, how unfortunate. Uh, yeah, like it. It not only goes to what Jordan Peele was saying about like, the theme of the film was, because every one of his th movies has a theme, a central premise. Um, with Get Out, it, it's generally about ra the racial relations, ideas of racism, and reverse racism as well. Um, plus, then Get Us, I, I, I believe it's an idea of like social identity and togetherness, if I'm not mistaken. Us, I still didn't quite get the message, yet, to be honest. Here, he flat out said... It's the the whole point of the film was attention, what we how much of it we want, what we will do for it, and the um, the prices we pay for it. But there's also some primal fears thrown in there too. I'm not going to say particularly the one I realized what it was, but when you realize what the twist is and the primal fear that comes with that from our biology as human beings, you're like, ah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, by the way, I should note the effects works on the sauce are actually really good. Um, so yeah, on the alien, on the, on the alien, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, parentheses, yes. um, and, uh, on the saucer effect. Yeah, actually that was all really good. The film's made on a $68 million budget, which by Hollywood standards is really not that bad. Uh, and if this film, from what they're predicting, is going to open anywhere between what us opened up on 70 some odd and get up 39, you'll be looking at, I'm guessing, 50 to 60 this week. I'd be happy to see a lot more, but I'm guessing this was going to open up and on a $68 million budget plus international this week. Oh, that's going to be a fantastic number. 100% is not going to be a good number uh, just for opening weekend. So, yeah, ultimately, nope's got my thumb, uh, my thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> my uh seal of approval uh so yeah i highly uh i do recommend it if you're interested if you like uh i, I should say it's a sci-fi thriller with uh with the elements of a b movie in there so and a bit of a western so yeah definitely i would give it a watch if you're interested certainly if you're on the fence i would say give it a watch uh the only thing, reason i wouldn't say give it a watch is if you're not a fan of this particular genre that's the only thing i could say against that but that's just me uh, until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you folks for the next one. Next week uh, is Legion of Super Pets. I'm also going to be catching Elvis. I got a, it's my, my vacation week next week, so I'm going to be playing a lot. I'm going to be resting up, relaxing, playing a lot of catch up on stuff. Uh, I'll have honestly, I'll be able to pre record so many videos uh, well before uh, well before the day comes. I'm actually really looking forward to that. Uh, but uh, I regardless. Uh, yeah, so Legion of Super Pets, don't worry. Elvis, I want to catch. And apparently, at least according to uh, Box Office Mojo, Everything Everywhere All at Once is getting a wide release, but it kind of already had one. I don't know what's happening. If by chance I get around to it, I will catch that because for nothing but amazing things, I've heard best movie of the year, all that. Till then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you folks later. Have